There's a new coffee shop in my neighborhood and I stop there most mornings to grab a cup on my way to spend a few minutes watching the surfers down at the pier. When it first opened, I would save time by ordering ahead using an app, step inside just long enough to pick up my drink, and then be on my way without having to interact with anyone. But a couple of months ago, during my morning prayer time, I sensed the Lord prompting me to change my routine and spend the extra time it would take to place my order in store at the counter. I'm an introvert and a bit of an efficiency freak, so I dislike engaging in small talk with salespeople and I hate taking longer to accomplish something than necessary. But as I yielded to the Spirit's nudge, my attention was drawn to the name badge on the apron of the young man who took my order. And after leaving with my coffee, I caught myself reflexively curious about and praying for him randomly throughout the day. Once I knew his name, I couldn't just dismiss him as the bearded barista wearing the newsboy hat. That's when I realized this was why God redirected my pattern that morning. And it's why I've continued to practice ever since. As I've taken the time to learn the names of the partners at that store, I've become invested in their lives in a deeper way and can pray for them with true empathy. Names have a unique power to connect us with others. A person's name is an invitation to a revelation of who they are. And that illustrates something from John 17, where the longest of the Lord's documented prayers is found. It's known as the High Priestly Prayer and takes up the whole chapter. The first five verses allow us to listen in on Jesus praying for himself. Then, in the next 14, the focus shifts to the disciples as he intercedes for them. But before making any requests on their behalf, verses 6 through 10 quote him reporting to his Father on their spiritual development. And since God is omniscient without needing to be informed about anything, this was clearly done for our sakes. Jesus was using this update to provide future believers who would read these words with a glimpse into his discipleship strategy for all of us. According to this passage, his plan involves several specific goals with the first being identified when he prayed, I have manifested your name. This phrase describes what leads to the essential first step in every Jesus follower's journey. It's what makes a life of faith possible. The Greek word rendered as manifested means revealed, and the word translated as name not only refers to what a person is called, but to who that person is. Get this. John's Gospel records 113 times when Jesus used the term Father to name the one who'd sent him. And every single time he did, he was purposefully revealing an important aspect of the nature of God and how he wants us to relate to him. That's because until a person comprehends his Father heart, it's impossible to place the full weight of their trust in him. And maybe that's what's been holding you back. Perhaps your pursuit of God feels shallower than you'd like, more religious than relational. If so, Jesus made it clear, 113 times to be exact, He wants to introduce you to the one you can find complete rest in and know as Father.